when we were in Washington, we were young, and I was new in the church and didn't know anything. And uh, I worked in the nursery, and then I was a beehive leader. And I knew nothing about Relief Society, and I didn't have a visiting teacher. Ken and I became good friends with a couple from Salt Lake City, Hal and Jane Cannon. They had two little boys the age of Brenda, and uh, Cynthia was our baby. And uh, Jane and I used to, um, she'd come over to visit, and we'd lie in the backyard and suntan. And Cynthia stayed in her playpen in the yard, and Brenda and the little boys played. And anyway, uh, we learned a lot about the church from the Cannons. After we moved to Jacksonville, it was re really wonderful because we were back in the South, and we were in the Jacksonville, uh, Florida State, and the people in the ward were all Southern folks, and we just felt right at home, and it was wonderful. And uh, the bishop was Ken's cousin. That was uh, Bishop Joe Jenkins. So right away, we were called to work with the youth. Then soon after that, uh, I was called into the bishop's office and asked to be and called to be the secretary in Relief Society, and that was the beginning of wonderful experience. And right away, I started keeping the records for Relief Society. And back then, we had a bank account. Relief Society did, and I. Uh, kept up with the visiting teaching. I made sure all the visiting teaching was done every month. And uh, so we just went all over visiting. Sister Boone became the State Relief Society president, and she just took me under her wing. She would... She would take me to the cannery when she... Uh, put up food for our family, and she taught me to do that, and to make bread, and to quilt, and do all the things that I never learned to do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Makes me cry to think about it. Um, anyway, um, so... Every year, the State Relief Society had a convention, and all it was for all the teachers that were 100% doing their visiting. I made a commitment that I would always do my visiting teaching. And, well, I wanted to be 100%, but I just knew it was important. So I, and I made sure I called and I did everything to get everybody to do their visiting. And anyway, so for the 10 years that we lived in Jacksonville, I was, well, I was a secretary and then I was a counselor in Relief Society. And all these ladies were just wonderful and they just taught me so much. And so when we uh, moved to Texas, we moved to Amarillo. Well, shortly thereafter, I was called to be the Ward Relief Society president. And our uh, president in Jacksonville, she used to tell me, someday you'll be a Relief Society president. And I thought, oh, that will never happen. Shortly after we moved to Amarillo, I was called to be the Relief Society president. And, um, and I wondered why. And I was really puzzled. Why was I called? And it really, I want to say it bothered me. And so uh, a couple of weeks after that, well, one morning I was getting dressed and I was in the bathroom, you know, combing my hair. And all of a sudden, the thought penetrated my heart because of visiting teaching. That's why I was called to be the Relief Society president, because of visiting teaching. I know that was revelation or inspiration that, because uh, I... You know, anyway, the visiting teaching was wasn't being done in Amarillo, and I made sure. I mean, no thanks to me, but anyway, um, I would interview each of the visiting teachers individually to get a commitment from them because you can't uh, 
you can't uh, get a group of people to commit to something because everybody will, you know, yeah, or, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But when you look somebody in the eye and have a prayer with them and ask them to do it, well, they will commit to do it. And so that's the way we got our 100 percenters in uh, Amarillo. And uh, anyway, I was the Relief Society president for just about all the time we were there for about four years. And uh, that was wonderful. Eventually, when we moved to Oklahoma City, well, the first day we went to church there, the state president called us in his office and uh, we didn't know why we were new and he talked to us and uh, he looked at me and he said uh, you could be a state relief society president but i don't need i have a state relief society president and that's all he said a few months later uh, they got a new a new state president and uh, he called one day and I guess he talked to Ken and then called me and said, uh, you know, the Lord wants you to be the State Relief Society president. And uh, so I was the State Relief Society president for seven years in Oklahoma, and that was so wonderful. And we, oh, went all over the state of Oklahoma in my Volkswagen van with all the sisters in there visiting all the units. and It was just really great. When I was State Relief Society president, when we would go to uh, Salt Lake, one of the counselors I was visiting with, well, she said, our, I shouldn't say this, she said, our State Relief Society presidents are getting younger and prettier. <laughs> <laughs> I was like uh, 40, 40, early 40s. Anyway, I love Relief Society, and it's just... It's just wonderful. It's uh, every lady should be a part of it, and uh, it's uh, it sure grew my testimony, and I learned so much, and uh, I'm so thankful for it.